move on to how feedback can be used to help students learn and to help them with their metacognition. And what I mean by metacognition is what students know about their own learning. And we find that with feedback in particular, students and teachers often think that feedback is only useful if I've gotten the answer wrong. So when students get their exams back, I know I've done this, I tend to just look at what's circled and what's marked off, and I only look at the feedback and what the correct answer was for what I got wrong. And one thing I'd like to highlight is that feedback actually improves learning of correct responses. So even if a student got an answer correct, by knowing and paying attention to the fact that they got it correct helps reinforce that learning of that information as well. So we don't only want to provide students with information about what they got wrong and what they need to fix, but it does help students to reinforce their learning with feedback for correct answers. Feedback improves both wrong and correct answers, and I'll show you some research to demonstrate that it improves students' metacognition or their ratings or predictions of their own learning. And feedback also improves overconfidence. Students from preschool on through college tend to be very overconfident about their learning. I'm sure you've had a student walk in your classroom and say, gee, I studied so hard for that exam and I got an F. What happened? And students tend to be very overconfident. The more quizzes you give them, the better able they are to assess their own learning. And by giving them feedback, they're able to learn from that and better calibrate their predictions and then know how to allocate their study time. So for instance, from our same middle school project in seventh grade science, again, here we're using a design where all students are in all the conditions. We take a chapter of material, for instance, on bacteria and plants. And in this case, students either got quizzes with feedback, they got quizzes without feedback, or they weren't quizzed at all. So here's how they did at the end of the chapter about three weeks later. Again, on the far left, I've plotted uh, when students were not quizzed, how they performed. In the middle, students who were quizzed without feedback, and on the far right, students were quizzed, or when students received quizzes with feedback. Again, if you're not quizzed, you're performing at about a B level, 80%. If you got quizzed without feedback, you see a little boost, 83%. But you see the largest benefit, a 14% boost, if you got a quiz with feedback. So quizzing is great. It does help. But added feedback helps reinforce that learning, especially over the long term. In this case, not elaborate at all. It's just that green check. Uh, it's just showing the correct answer, yes. We have done research to look at if you give the answer and then explain, well, a heterotroph, and you give the definition of a heterotroph, and then you explain why it's mushrooms. Simple feedback, like it's mushrooms, really helps students learn. And often we just, we as teachers sometimes fail to just give quick feedback. But elaborative feedback helps even more, of course, especially with more complex materials. In general, feedback helps them to remember better than no feedback, regardless of if the student is highly confident in their answer or they're just guessing. Now, I just wanted to hit home the point about how feedback helps with correct answers. If you're correct, but you're guessing on the answer, that's where you see the difference in feedback. So feedback really helps to boost learning if a student is just guessing, or if a student thinks they know the answer, they happen to get it correct, you want to make sure you're enforcing that learning from that correct but sort of unsure answer. So it's really important to be giving feedback on all kinds of questions, not just the wrong ones. Or when you hand students back their exam, make sure they're looking through all the answers, not just the ones they got wrong. So how do you encourage metacognition in your classroom? Again, give feedback for all questions, not just wrong ones. Encourage students to review incorrect and correct answers and encourage students to make their own judgments of learning or confidence ratings. Again, most students are overconfident in their learning. They tend to misallocate how much time I should study or let me study this information instead of that one because they're not always thinking about or assessing their own learning. So by using quizzing and feedback, you really do help students to become better prepared and better aware of their own learning and then better able to adjust that with feedback. Mm -hmm.